Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today what I wanted to do is take a minute and show you how we pour our posts. I see a lot of videos on YouTube and people have a lot of different methods, but I want to talk about what we do and especially for vinyl posts. So we've shown you how we pound the vinyl posts using our no-dig method, but today we're going to pour the posts more, use a more conventional method and pour them using concrete. One of the reasons that we did that on this job is because we had removal on the project and when you pull all those big concrete balls out and then we need to go back in the same spot, that soil is disturbed and so driving is not an option because we're dealing with disturbed soil and we would have problems with the fence wanting to lean and being loose in the wind and stuff like that. So we'll show you how we pour our concrete. We'll talk a little bit about why we do the things the way we do as we go around and set all these posts today. So before we get into this, Make sure that you subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you know when we upload new content. And if you like what we're doing or have questions about what we're doing, we try and answer as many comments as we can on this channel. So leave us a comment with your questions, concerns, or uh, productive criticism. Or hey, we like to hear nice things about what we're doing too. So without further ado, let's pour some concrete. So one of the things that you'll notice right away is that we go ahead and pour all of our holes full of concrete without having a post in there. So we do what is called the stab method, meaning that we stab the post down inside the concrete. And the first thing you're going to think is, well, that might be great for a hollow post like vinyl. Well, let me show you something. We can do that same thing with a wood post. I could level this post up. And if I had a string, if you're a person that likes to use a string, that's fine. We do everything via eyesight, and I've talked about that. And we'll try and cover some of that here in this video, uh, how we set all these posts using nothing but our eyes. But you can see that even a 4x4 post, I can easily push into the concrete without much effort. The key to that is, is to keep your slump correct. So if you let this concrete on a nice warm day like today sit in the hole too long without spinning, it'll harden really fast. And before too long, you'll be fighting getting the post down. So we like to keep the concrete at about a five slump and then start putting posts in the ground. And you can see how easy these go on the ground. Now the key in the beginning is I'm not so worried about my height. I just want to make sure that we're not, we're deep enough. It's a lot easier to pull the post back out once the concrete starts hardening than it is to push it down. I like to use a two foot level. It just gives me a little bit more accuracy. So most of our guys are trained using a two foot level. So you notice if I get it off, if it's not where I want it, I don't pull it all the way out. I pull it up, angle it, and then shove it back in that way if I want to go that way, or this way if I want to go in this way. Right on the edge of the J trim. So this should be right there. There's no need to pull the post all the way out of the hole to make small adjustments. So what we did is we just set two posts. Once I have these two posts, then I have, I always need two posts to be able to line, and that's gonna be my rabbit post back behind me. So now I can just line these posts up with those two posts, and then check back that direction to make sure I'm hitting my rabbit post. When I leveled that post up, I noticed that it was not quite plumb, and I only needed to come over this way, so instead of pulling it up and moving it, I just slid it in the ground the direction I need to go. Again, during this first step, I don't care anything about whether or not my flow is set. All I'm trying to do is make sure the posts are deep enough so I can come back and raise them later on. So now I can look back this way and the camera will come back behind me and you can see that when this is in line, we're headed straight for that end post. And I use both sides. That way if I get either one of these posts twisted just a little bit, um, if I'm siding off of both sides, it'll take into account that twist, just in case the, the post is not perfectly in line. Um, it won't make any difference at the end, the end of the day, and the fence will still look great. Good. Even if your post isn't twisted, sometimes there'll be a little bow or a little curve right here. So these will stick out a little further than the corners. So even if you're not twisted, it can be hard to see past this and they might not all be consistent. So that's why we 
always make dang good and sure we're siding off of both sides of the post. And as you get a line established, it's really easy to tell whether or not your post is twisted at all because you have the rest of the line to look at. I can see the bottom needs to go that way. Rather than pick it up and try and bump it just a little bit, I'll just push it in the ground that way. Went a little too much, so I'll pull it up a little bit and just come back. We use the same method for chain link. It doesn't matter if it's chain link, a wood post, one of our postmaster posts. You'll find it doesn't take much to move a post over a quarter inch or half inch. One of the things that we see our guys struggle with the most is striving for absolute perfection, a, a bubble that is precisely in between the two lines. And that's great if you can get it, but once you can sight everything in, if it's a fraction it out, it might mean that from the top of the post to the bottom of the post, it's out of plumb that much. And we don't want to fight for that because it's not, at the overall scheme of things, you're never going to see that. Now with that set, I can go back here. I can make sure we're still lining up, which we are. And so this line's set and I didn't use a string anywhere. One of the other things you're probably asking yourself is how do I brace this post up? I see a lot of people on YouTube and they'll take two by fours and they'll brace everything up all nice and neat. With this, you don't have to worry about that. And it wouldn't matter if it was a wood post, a chain link post. You don't have to worry about how I'm gonna brace chain link post. The mud is stiff enough right out of the truck, even as loose as this is, that the worst we're gonna have to do is go back and just verify once we get all done that everything stayed plumb. That bottom is really not gonna move. So if the top gets blown out a little bit because the wind's blowing super hard today, which Wyoming's known for its wind, we're not concerned at all because we'll just come back and bump it back up as that concrete stiffens. There's no need to waste all the extra time and money and effort to brace every single post. We can just stab them into the concrete and go. And you can see if you look down here, hopefully you can focus in on that and you can see that we're dead in line. You can just kind of pan back and forth. And so this concrete's about a five slump is what we like to pour at. That means that if they, they have a little cone that they'll set down on a plate and it's a cone and then they'll fill it up and they'll tap it all around and then when they pull the cone off it means that the concrete dome or that conical uh, piece of concrete that's still wet falls five inches. So if it's a four inch slump it means it only falls four inches. So the lower the slump the stiffer the mud. Uh, if you get this concrete too stiff then it becomes really difficult to get these posts pushed down in there. If you're at home and you're using some sack mix that you picked up from Home Depot, uh, the aggregate that is in the sack mix from Home Depot and your uh, improve, home improvement centers is gonna be a lot finer. And so it takes, uh, to get a five slump is gonna be more difficult and it's, a more, it's denser and harder to push these posts in. So having a wetter mix for that stuff is going to be important. But you can see, and this stuff will start drying out very rapidly. Once you stop spinning it, once it stops moving and it's in these dry holes, you can see how dry this dirt is. It will suck all that moisture out of there so fast. So you really need to be on top of your game if you're going to do this. Which is the other reason that we're not worried about bracing this stuff up. I don't know how I'd brace it up and I'm not worried about how I'm going to brace it up. In an hour, these posts will be so stiff that you won't be able to move them without actually cracking the concrete because it'll already be cured that much. If you did have a string down here at the bottom and you want your more comfortable setting to a string line, the best technique is, is to keep it just slightly off your string, maybe a quarter of an inch off your string all the way. That way none of the posts actually pushes. And then you can use your eyesight just like we're doing. Even if we're looking at the string down here, I don't have to put a second string at the top to make sure that they all line up. I can just eyeball it. Um, if I had a post that was out of whack here, your eye is gonna notice that, which is why eventually you're gonna have to learn how to eyeball that stuff in and make sure it's straight. Some people call it rifle sighting. If I ever call this level, please, please forgive me. I'm just misspeaking. I realize that this is level this is plumb. Oh, golly. This is where it's, we can see better than the string line. There's shrubs and this is a mess. This is why I don't like string lines. This is because this stuff would be hanging us up all over the place. Nothing like hanging out in the bushes. You need to go in quite a bit. Your whole bottom needs to go that way a lot. 
So we were just talking and one of the other things you might notice is that we're not sitting in any of the bottom rail. We don't care. Uh, all we're trying to do is make sure that it doesn't exceed our max spacing, which is what? 94, so we can go 96 inches uh, center to center. So as long as we don't have any spaces that are more than 96 inches center to center, we should be good. So the goal is to have that bottom rail about two inches up off the ground. So we've got a little bit of up and down to play with. And when we grade it out, we're basically gonna use the same method and we're just gonna make sure it follows the slope and the contour of the ground while still looking good. So we may follow some dips and ignore others to get a good consistent look. So this is the wet set method that we use and we pour our concrete out of a truck. The reason we do that is because we've found that it is much more economical and quicker in our area to get a truck than it ever would be to mix all this up. I don't know how many yards this is, but we're using about one tenth of a yard per hole. So we get about 10 holes per yard with these 12 inch holes. And that is, uh, you know, if we've got 30 posts and that's three yards of concrete, and then we don't have to worry about skimping on concrete. A lot of people try and use two bags per hole. This is probably four bags, at least four 60 pound bags of concrete per hole. So we just did this whole line and you can tell how perfectly this line all lines up all the way down both sides. Um, basically when I look at one of these posts, all the rest of them deer disappear behind it. But he'll also show you how rough it is right now on the top. So the, the grade has not been set. And this is where we get a lot of our customers will come out in the middle of the job and be like, oh my gosh, that post right there looks terrible. And then we have to say, calm down, Mrs. Johnson. Give us a second, we'll get to it. There is a process, I assure you. And so the next thing that we'll show you is, is how we get all that graded out. But we do have a lot of homeowners that, and even concrete truck drivers that wanna help us out and they kind of freak out because it looks like trash right now. So back in the beginning, there was a bunch of manufacturers, some of the manufacturers, maybe not a bunch. One I can think of was Buff Tech. And they had you putting rebar inside the post on each corner on two opposite corners and then filling the post full of concrete. Well, but what they found out over time is, is that that really did nothing good for you because it made the post so rigid. The concrete really was never curing great because it was inside the post, so it would just add a lot of weight to it. And when you had to repair something, it would make it an absolute nightmare uh, to get the rails out because the rails would be locked in with all the concrete. We've been doing vinyl posts without any inserts uh, as long as it's not over six foot tall like this for a uh, i'm gonna say going on about 20 years now and even in the wyoming's high wind and having fences that should be out there weakening as time goes on have never had issues with wind blowing the fences down so if you're thinking that you need to install concrete in these posts, that's a horrible idea. A much better solution would be to either use aluminum stiffeners or do what we did and go to the pipe and use the pipe in conjunction like we do on the gate posts and do that. But I would, still wouldn't even bring it up that high. Um, like on a six foot fence, if we brought that up three feet, like on our dr no dig driven fence, um, these posts would add out a lot of rigidity. So that's what we actually do if we need to go to a seven foot or eight foot tall fence is we'll add steel to the inside, but never ever concrete. When we talk about being flat, that just means that those last three posts, if you looked across the top of them, they're just as, they're just as straight in line vertically as they are on a horizontal plane. So the first three posts are flat, and then he just stepped each one of these down so that we could hit our grade right here. And this lawn's kind of built up right here by the, the sidewalk. So obviously if we went all the way down to the sidewalk, we'd be digging that rail in like three inches, and we don't want to do that. These three posts right here are flat right into the house. Then he steps this one down just a little bit. And then he steps this one down just a little bit more. So if I looked across the top of this post to the top of the gate post right here, my line, my eyesight line would probably be somewhere in there. And that's how we roll down a hill. And so this one right here is just a little bit lower yet. So if I sighted between this one and this one, then my eyesight line would be somewhere in there. And if the grade gets steeper and steeper and steeper, 
then that line where those those line up will grow like this if i need to go down a whole bunch in one post then that'll instead of it being half an inch or an inch it might be two or three inches and then as i come back up the other grade instead of uh, seeing what we see here my eyesight line might be up here and that would be, mean that i'm rolling up a hill so instead of, i don't know where the line is down there with the camera but instead of being up here you can see this post is dropped and that's what the top looks like when they're dropped. When we say something is flat, that just means this top lines up with this top and it lines up with this top. So all three of these are flat and then we just roll it right down the hill there. It makes a lot more sense. And what we'll try and do is we'll try and get a video of all this sometime when we're doing a four foot chain link fence and show you how that rolls. It's a little tougher with a six foot tall fence and it gets even more difficult with taller fences. So that's when we'll use a mark on the side of the post and we'll line up all the marks rather than looking across the top. So we'll put a mark on the chain link stuff uh, called a grade mark and that mark we want to make sure that it never goes into the ground because if it goes into the ground it's too deep. We don't have to do that with these because they have a rail hole. But if we were going to do a sight mark we'd put it uh, about a foot down here. Usually I'm about, my eyesight's right about five feet so that's where I put a sight mark and then I can use all those to line up. So this whole back line, you can see that we didn't do a, a whole lot of trimming on these lilac bushes. Running a string line would have been really difficult. They just basically eyesighted everything in when they dug all the holes and then we did the same exact process when we set all the posts. So all these are eyesighted, they're perfectly straight in line all the way up down there. The other big reason in Wyoming is we don't like strings because it's constantly blowing. Today's a pretty calm day, but we get a lot of days where the wind's 40 miles an hour and even a line that's 100 feet long, well, that string is, tight as you try and get it will blow side to side. So the third reason would be uh, not applicable on this particular job, but if we were going up over hills and stuff, it gets really tough. We can sometimes sight posts in through hills and valleys where we can, the string might be clear up here higher than we could reach. And trying to get a string in a straight line going through a bunch of dips and hills and valleys can be very difficult. So is it as good without a string? I guarantee you it's as good without a string. Once you get the skill down, you can absolutely make a fence just as straight. I'm not going to say we never use a string, but what I do more, more often than not on a job like this, because I'm not going to set my string up again and I'm not trying to do a thousand feet, I'll use my 300 foot tape measure, pull it tight between corners, and then just paint my marks on the ground, move it to the next section and never put up a string. So I'm, I'm sure that we're going to get a lot of people ask us, well, is it okay to put my concrete in the hole dry? Now we've got another video on YouTube where we talk about dry concrete versus wet concrete and foam. Our company has always poured concrete dry. That's just how we've done business. I know a lot of people will do it dry. The thing I would caution you about is if you're going to put the concrete in the hole dry, number one, you've got to pack it. It's not called dry setting, it's called dry packing. You've got to actually tamp the concrete around the post very firmly. You can't just dump the sack in there leave it all loose and expect it to work. It's gonna produce really weak concrete. It's gonna have very poor properties as far as getting hard. And I just can't ever really condone that method of just throwing it in there dry. And then in Wyoming, because we don't have a whole lot of moisture and you can see how dry this ground is, it's gonna take a long time for that concrete to get hard. So I would suggest wetting the top down, maybe leaving your hole down about yay far and then adding water a couple times after you get everything set up just right. The reason people like to use the dry pack method is, is because once the posts are tamped in place, they can go back and they can bump them up or bump them down. Um, after they get their rails in. So they can use their rails as their guide. And that's actually the best way, if you've seen the no dig fence, doing it that way, using your rails to kind of set your height is a really good way because it gives you a visual. And then again, you're staying away from your string, which can be very abrupt and making grade changes. So hopefully you've gotten a little bit out of this and you learned why we don't brace posts, why we don't put concrete inside a vinyl post, why we don't use a string. Talked about some of the pitfalls of dry setting or dry packing versus wet setting. But hopefully you've learned a little bit about how we eyesight everything in and how we set our posts. And if you've got a project coming up, hopefully this gives you some food for thought on how you can improve and make things a little bit faster. And whatever you do, don't waste all that time and effort and money on lumber to brace it up because I guarantee you these posts are already solid enough right now, even though being an hour and a half after we've set them, they'll stand up to whatever wind can throw at them. So until next time, you have a good dang day. So I just wanted to come back here real quick. The guys poured everything yesterday, started cutting all the rails and finished it up this morning and they're off on another project. But just kind of wanted to show you guys how things look now that it's easier to see since we've got the rails in there, it gives you a little bit more of a, a way to 
kind of see the flow and how we set that flow without those strings and see whether or not we were successful at doing what we set out to do. And you can see on this line how it comes up and then it's fairly flat all the way across the backyard, but we do have to taper down right here just because there's uh, the way the dirt is built up across the back of the lot. And now we don't have all the trees and everything, so you can see how if you come over here and you look in line, you can see that all the posts are dead in line. We've got a nice straight line without ever having used a string line. And that blows a lot of people's minds. So on the front side, we don't have the gates hung yet. So we didn't have all the gates built. Uh, they were running a little bit behind getting the gates built. So when the crew comes back from Cody this evening, they'll bring the gates and they'll hang those, which is a really quick, easy process. If you don't know how to hang a gate or you want to see more about the gate hardware, there's some videos on our site uh, on YouTube about how to do that. But you can see how I was talking yesterday, uh, how those the, across the gate openings fairly well flat. All three of those posts are flat with each other, and then we kind of taper off and slope downhill uh, this way to where we come out to the sidewalk, which is pretty common because everybody wants all their lots to drain away from the house. So it's very common to have towards the house be higher and then you need to roll the fence down away towards the street and that's just for drainage. But now that all the rails are in there, you can kind of see how we rolled that and we did all of that by eyesight. Basically just dropping each post a little bit every time so that when we got to the corner, we were at the elevation that we chose. That's all I have to say about that. We've already, we already filmed the outro. Just, all right. I'm tired of talking to you when the camera's not rolling and then Nick's like, oh, sorry, I didn't get that. I wasn't quite ready. Are you ready, Nick? I'm ready. Okay. The people want to know. So, I don't remember what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm speechless. That doesn't happen every day, but I am. I'm sitting here speechless.